Hi, I'm Stumpy Nubs, and this is your guide to cut nails. Since the dawn of civilization, craftsmen have been using nails to hold their parts together. The Romans really nailed the design, creating a square tapered shaft that is so perfect it only required small modifications over thousands of years. Then, in the latter half of the 19th century, someone invented the wire nail and screwed everything up. Sure, wire nails are much less expensive to make, but they're stripped of the features that are essential for them to do their job, holding stuff together. So let's take a look at the anatomy of the cut nail to illustrate the point. The Roman version featured a square shaft that was tapered on all four sides. The size and shape of the head varied because they were hand forged. Toward the end of the 18th century, machine cut nails became common. These still featured a square shaft, though the taper appears on only two of the four sides, a necessity of the cutting process that also provided an unexpected advantage, which we'll discuss shortly. Machine cut nails usually feature smaller rectangular heads, but the holding power didn't really come from the head. It was the shaft that did the work. You see, when you drive a cut nail into a piece of wood, the tapered sides produce a wedging action that forces the wood fibers down. As the nail is driven deeper, the tapered shaft widens, and more and more wood fibers are wedged downward. This creates thousands of little barbs that grip the rough shaft of the nail, holding it in place. A modern wire nail has no taper, so as it's driven, it spreads the fibers away from the shaft and pushes them radially rather than downward. For this reason, tests have shown that joints secured with cut nails are as much as 130% stronger than those secured with wire nails. Another benefit of a cut nail is that it's far less likely to split your wood. But that wasn't always the case. The Roman nail, with its four tapered sides, was even more prone to splitting than the modern wire nail. But the process of making cut nails, as we said, produces just two tapered sides. This means that if you bore a hole slightly smaller than the nail's thickness, and as long as you orient the wedge shape with the grain, it will not split your workpiece. It will, however, spread the fibers along the grain, tightening the nail in the hole as you drive it deeper, as we explained before. On the other hand, you can bore a pilot hole for a wire nail, and you may avoid splitting your material, but the gripping power is dramatically reduced without the wedged profile to grip the interior of the hole. Finally, cut nails don't require large heads. In fact, you don't need much of a head at all. The wedge shape holds the workpiece down, and a smaller head means a better looking joint. When wire nails came along, they were embraced by the construction industry because they could be made cheaply in large quantities, but the poor performance caused them to fall out of favor with many craftsmen. Today, many woodworkers believe that the use of nails is a sign of an inferior product, and for the most part, that's true. But it wasn't always that way. Some of the finest furniture of the past was full of nails. Even joints that were assembled with glue were sometimes reinforced with nails. I've seen finely cut dovetails with nails driven through the sides to further strengthen the joint. Of course, they weren't used normally in highly visible areas, but the nails were perfectly acceptable in fine furniture making for millennia. So there is a place for this once essential fastener in the modern workshop. You need only know a few things to use them properly. First, what size should you use? Since colonial times here in America, a penny system has been employed to indicate the length of nails. It was originally based on the price for 100 nails of a certain size in 15th century England. For two pennies, you could get 100 one-inch nails. For every quarter inch of length beyond that, the price went up a penny. So a three-penny nail was an inch and a quarter long. A four-penny nail was an inch and a half, and so on. The letter D is used as an abbreviation for penny, D standing for denarius, the small Roman coin that was the forerunner of the Old English penny. So a two-penny nail is the same as a 2D nail, and both are an inch long. A 3D nail is an inch and a quarter long, a 4D nail is an inch and a half, and so on. Once you get the rating system figured out, you'll have to decide which length to use on your project. A rule of thumb is to divide the thickness of the material you are nailing through into eighths of an inch. 
and match that number to the nail size. So a three quarter inch thick board would be six eighths and you would use a 6D nail. A half inch thick board would be 4 eighths, so you would use a 4D nail. If that nail pokes through the back side of your material, it's customary to clinch it by bending the point to one side. Of course, if you don't like the look of a clinched nail, you can use a shorter one in those cases. So now you understand the rating system, you can choose the right nail for the job, but how do you find good cut nails today? The internet. eBay is an excellent place to buy antique nails that have survived in excellent condition. Just as modern nails are abundant today, cut nails were made by the millions 150 years ago, and lots of them are still around. They can be a little pricey, especially the shipping, but nothing beats the real thing. There are also a couple of companies that still make cut nails today, and some woodworking specialty stores sell small bags of them. All you have to do is a little searching online, and you'll find a number of sources. In a pinch, you can use cut masonry nails that you find in hardware stores and home centers, although the heads tend to be longer or narrower than a traditional looking cut nail, and they're hardened so you can't clinch them. With a little looking around, you'll be back to old-fashioned nailing in no time. Be sure to check out future issues of Stumpy Nub's Woodworking Journal for the best in woodworking tips, tricks, and infotainment. You can get a free subscription at StumpyNubs.com, and we'll see you next time.